Is the market going to crash in 2022? Well, technically it took a little dip. So in this video, we are going to tell you exactly how you should respond when your investments don't go according to plan. My name is Carmen. And I'm Darius. And let's take this into consideration. Let's not wait until something happened in order to make adjustments. We should be making adjustments all along because we have a plan that we're following. We need to stick to our guns and stick to our plans. <laughs> I like how you just open up with that. How about let's be proactive? Uh, yeah. How, and- how about let's be proactive instead of reactive? Yeah. So if you're watching this video, it's too late. <laughs> right. Because when we when we react, we end up making a mistake. And a lot of like I, I watch the stocks on the on the news and a lot of times by the time we see it, it's already too late. We should be proactive and anticipate uh, opportunities before they actually happen. Because if the stock market crashes or if it takes a dip, that means there's opportunity. Now, how is there opportunity for some of us? Because here, the reason why we're having this conversation is because a lot of our exposure to the stock market is through our 401ks or through our retirement. Mm-hmm. And there isn't a lot you can do to make adjustments within your 401k. So you're actually looking at this part, be panicking because you're thinking about your your retirement, retirement. especially if you're going to be retiring soon. Mm, that's a good point. All right. So what we want to start with, we have five points that we want to share with you. So the very first point that we want to share with you is clarity. And that kind of alludes to what Darius is saying. What I want to make sure that we understand is that we're not just talking about investing in the stock market. We're talking about any asset class, any asset class. You need to have clarity for your finances. You need to have clarity in what it is that you're doing because you need to understand at any point your investments can go a different way than you planned. So how are we going to be proactive and ensuring that regardless of how our investments perform, we're always prepared or we're always forward thinking. So when we think about clarity is first and foremost, why are you getting involved in the things that you're getting involved in and ensuring that it aligns with what it is that you want to do and what financial freedom looks for you. Because more often than not, we find people get involved with the next biggest, hottest, trendiest thing because their neighbor's doing it or their brother's doing it and they don't have clarity or they don't have enough education to understand what this thing is in the first place exactly and that's exactly what i was going to what i was going to talk about is the fact that you don't have the education to make a decision a, a educated decision on what you should be doing next so whenever something happens and you're like oh my god the sky is falling it's because you didn't do the, ne- the necessary uh, due diligence and education and research on what you do with your money yeah And if there's one more person that tells me I'm doing crypto because my brother made X amount of dollars doing crypto, like, what do you know about crypto? Right. (laughs) How how do you know that this is a good investment play for you? What's your exit strategy? And then they can't answer those things. So again, clarity, clarity, clarity is the very first point that we want to stress. If you don't have clarity, do not get involved. Please save yourself and everyone else around you the headache. Right. Now, the second point is liquidity. Liquidity is so important because let's say you are good with the stock market or or let's say that you're not so good with the stock market is you make your biggest bang on your vert on your buck on the purchase. So when the stock market, when and if the stock market dips or crashes, there's opportunity there for those that have the liquidity to take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. And, and liquidity is important too, because between 2020 and 2022, where we are right now, billionaires have created over a trillion dollars in wealth transfer because of the opportunity opportunities that they sought out. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So liquidity is important because when opportunities arise, you have to have the cash available to make those said transactions. And if you have all of your money tied up in assets that aren't cash flowing for you, you're stuck and you can't do any more investments or do anything because your cash is all tied up. A lot of times people think that just because I'm investing and I'm putting my money here and there, I'm doing great things, but then they're cash broke because they can't make any more investments. So it is important important to have a balance of having assets um, that that maybe will will pay out in the future, but then having assets that are creating cash flow and then having some form of liquidity on you so that you can continue to to invest and and to seek out opportunities. Right, because that goes into our next point of diversification, because just because the stock market may crash, there may be an opportunities in a different asset class like commodities Mm -hmm. or real estate. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to, to be diversified across different asset classes. You may be diversified in your stock portfolio, but it's all stocks. How's that? 
diversification. Not diversification. It's not the diversification we're talking about. Yes, you have a diversified portfolio in stocks, but we're talking about diversification across different asset classes. <laughs> so, so let's put this in layman's terms, right? So let's talk about your shoe collection. If you have a bunch of sneakers, you can go out and do a bunch of running. But what right. if it snows? You don't have snow boots. What about rain boots? What about uh, hiking boots? What are your sneakers going to do when you need to, to do these other things? So that's what we're talking about, diversification. It's nice that have a whole bunch of sneakers but what are those sneakers going to do if you need to go hiking right right you need a little bit of traction so so these are things that we want you to think about so when we think about diversification i have five asset classes that i want you to consider and these are things that you should all be involved in because it's not a, it is about having a diverse portfolio absolutely but outside of that true diversification means having other assets and other uh, avenues so that if the stock market crashes your real estate's going up or commodities are going up. So you're not just dependent on one thing. Right. So the very first one is cash, right? We talked about that liquidity, being liquidity. Yeah. The next thing is equity. So what does equity mean? Equity means like you're investing in a business, right? A future payout at some point, something's going to get to give you some Basically money. Basically the stock market. Or, or for, stocks. For, for, so there's, when it comes to equity, there's various ways you can invest. You can invest in a large company through a, uh, the stock market, or you can have private equity in a company. Um, venture through, capital. Yeah, venture capital. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the next one is fixed income. So some sort of lending vehicle, money that you have lent out that's coming back to you that's creating a fixed income for yourself. Mm-hmm. The next one is real estate. So are we doing buy and holds? Are we flipping? Or it doesn't matter what it is. Commercial, that doing. mortgage notes. Tax liens, whatever, <laughs> whatever your deal is. Are you involved in real estate in, in some way, shape, or form? And then the last one is commodities. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of... A lot lot of things that are going on with farmland uh but between is it bezos and and gates buying up farmland people want to know what's going on there look into that you might want to see what's going on there but all of these things are the assets that you should possess or at least have your foot in so that if one goes down the other ones you can continue to ride that wave right now the and and we actually did a video on that so we'll link it up here or down there so that you can uh, see that video in more detail right now these points keep building on each other the next point is going to be making sure you get advice good solid financial advice from somebody and that be a financial advisor be that your research online whoever it is make sure you get good sound financial advice because what we're telling you is the advice that we got from our financial advisor because we go to people for information also because we don't know everything so what we do is we get the research and we aren't afraid to pay somebody to give us good advice Mm -hmm. yeah so with the good advice if you want help definitely click on the link below we would love to serve you at the wealth nation but having good counsel is important Mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that you also understand that having good counsel doesn't mean that you're just relying on one person um so i I want to let take time to elaborate and massage this point a little bit because sometimes we just rely like on our financial advisor or we just rely on our insurance agent, or we just rely on our mom. <laughs> Whomever it is that, you, that you're seeking good counsel, it's important that you diversify those individuals as well, because everyone should have their specialty. Nobody's going to be able to master every market all the time, constantly. So it's important that you diversify the people that you are getting counsel from, so that one, they're either all working together to give you the best advice, or two, you're gathering the information from all these people to make the best decision a a combination of both right because at the end of the day this is your financial dreams terms conditions everything wrapped up into one so going back to that clarity you should have a team built around you with people who are specialists in each of these asset classes so that you know exactly what you should be doing when you should be doing it and why you should be doing it and of course making sure that it is in alignment with the things that you want to do right and that's one of the reasons why we're having this conversation is because we've been been able to build a community of financial advisors to help us along the way and we want you to have the opportunity to meet with them and ask your own questions our foundation is of course the uh asset class of cash which uh life insurance falls under mm-hmm. but we also have uh fi- certified financial advisors that can help you along your way with retirement and financial planning be it you want exposure to the stock market they can help you with all those things exactly. so if you want access to those people and you want a life insurance policy make sure you click on the link below to become a part of the wealth nation 
So we'll get into the last point in just a minute, but the thing that I wanted to just have a, some dialogue more with you, Darius, is I want to take the time to, to really do justice to this topic because more often than, than not, everyone is like, well, Carmen and Darius, what happens if life insurance cr- uh, yeah, cr- right. crashes? What happens if this crashes? The real estate market crashes? What happens if everything crashes? And again, what we want to continue to stress is you always have to have a plan. Mm-hmm. And if you're not planning, then you're planning to fail. Right. And that's where stress and all of that stuff comes into, into play because you you don't have a plan at heart. Right. So, so again, are, are there any other things that you want to say to those people who ask that the question? What if yeah. What if, you know, what if the sky falls? What if anything, what if you go outside today and get striked by a lightning? What if you get in your car and, and things don't go the way you want it to go? What if there's a lot of things that can happen in our day to day and for us financially, but it's because we didn't have a plan or we de- were dependent upon one single source of information for how we make those decisions. We need to have a few different points of reference so that we can make the best decision for us, because here's the thing. Everybody's financial situation is different. Carmen and I's financial situation is different from you. Your financial dis- situation is different from your neighbors, is different from your mom's, is different from everybody around you but you have to have the right counsel to put things into perspective for you because the thing i like about financial advisors is the fact that they talk with people from a variety of different situations heck they have their own situation that they're dealing with but what they're able to do is you're able to have a conversation specifically about finance on how you can make the best decision for yourself moving forward now i'm not saying you go out there and and just dump all your money into bitcoin because that's what somebody told you to do online you have to do your due diligence and your research because everything has a risk involved with it especially if it's your first time doing it or if it's your first time getting educated upon a, a specific thing I, i'm glad that you made that point because you're saying like the what if first yeah there's so many other things that can happen between like the financial crisis coming to an end um that maybe you're not taking into consideration so a lot of times when people come to us and they say what if i'm thinking what if you don't have a power of attorney <laughs> what if you don't have a will <laughs> what, what if you don't have all these things because not being morbid um what if you don't ask the right question you you could pass away and then everything that you have in line and organized can go to the state and now your family has to battle with the state because you didn't have your ducks in a row Mm -hmm. so what we want you to do is refocus some of your efforts on these what ifs and make sure that your family is protected because if the market or whatever is going to to crash things are always going to ebb and flow but do you have a concrete wall built around your family and the foundation that you've built to ensure that what if you pass they can and they can get the resources that they need to have access to your assets. Um, so those are things that I want to to stress because we get too many times where people are like, oh, the market's going to crash. Well, yes, something's going to change. Yeah, <laughs> that, That's a guarantee. Things are going to change. But do you have a power of attorney? Do you have a will? Does your family know what needs to happen should you not be here? And more often than not, those answers are never answered because there isn't a plan right so if the stock market crashes good you've taken the necessary (laughs) steps you have clarity on your strategy you are liquid to take advantage of uh, opportunities that presents itself if the market crashes you have diversification across asset classes so if the stock market goes down it goes up someplace else there's Mm -hmm. always an opportunity created someplace else when you have diversification across multiple asset classes and the next thing is you have good counsel Mm -hmm. And the other thing, too, that I want to add to this is one thing we didn't talk about either is collateral, ladies and gentlemen. When we are investing, when we are putting our money in places, we should always have a guaranteed payback in some way, shape or form, because this money game is never about losing money. And if you get involved in the money game thinking that risk is okay, uh, we're playing the wrong game. (laughs) So collateral is something that is very important for you to understand, meaning again, your guaranteed payback. So if you're getting involved in real estate, if you're getting involved, you know, where your cash is, how you're doing equity, how you're doing your commodities, you have to figure out what is a guaranteed payback so that you never lose control your money right and for those people that manage billions of funds in the stock market they have so much information 
And you ever talk to any of those guys? <laughs> like, it's it's crazy. It's a little how, overwhelming. Yeah, it is. It's a little overwhelming. And I can't imagine doing that myself. No. I can't imagine doing that myself with a few hundred grand and you're doing it with billions of dollars. Yeah, you need a team of people. Yeah, they eat, sleep, and breathe this thing. Mm-hmm. So if I'm thinking about if the stock market crashes, what am I going to do? It means, and if I'm comparing myself to where they are, like I, I know we have the Charles Swabs and the um, the Robin Hood accounts, and we have those different ways of investing into the stock market. But it's so much more complicated than what we're thinking. There's an opportunity that presents itself on both ends of the spectrum. Either the market's going up or if the market crashes, there's so many opportunities around us that if we continue to educate ourselves, we can take advantage of the market, whether it goes up or down. So let's go ahead and jump into the last point, which we believe is fortitude. And that's why we save the best for last. And again, like we said, these points actually came from one of our mentors and, and, and financial advisors. So we can't even take credit for these. When he went through these, we were like, yep, we're going to use that. <laughs> and we're going to share that with our channel. So, so thank you, Andrew. Thank you for that. Um, uh, fortitude, fortitude, fortitude. And, and when you think about the definition of fortitude, it's basically talking about your mental toughness, uh, in the midst of adversity. Mm -hmm. Um, because like we said, things are going to change, things are going to go up and down and it goes back to that fortitude, that mental strength that you need to continuously have and be consistent with to know that your plan is set to know that if a shiny object comes your way, you're not going to get distracted. You're going to stay focused and that you're not going to lose your marbles if if the market tanks, if you lose money or whatever the case may be. Again, going back to clarity, fortitude is so important for you to make sure that you understand what you're getting into and that you're okay with where you are. Right. It reminds me of the point, if if you can keep your head when all about you're losing theirs and blaming it on you, it seems like it's talking about fortitude. Yeah, I agree that. I totally agree with that. Yeah. And, and, That's something hard to have when everybody else is running for the hills and you're running towards it. Yeah. But that's the that's basically what Warren Buffett says when everybody else is running for the hills. When when the stocks go down, there's people like him that's running towards it. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, basically a lesson on fortitude. Yeah, that's a great lesson on fortitude, because the minute something goes down, that's when people start freaking out and going, what's going on? And it's because they don't have the clarity because they're freaking out in the first place as as far as what's going on. So right. w- when things start to tank, that's where you go, okay, let's, let's move some money over here. Let's do that. Let's do this because we're being proactive. They, absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, we hope this information was helpful. Again, we said clarity, liquidity, diversification, fortitude, and good counsel. So if you want to continue learning how to create passive income, then definitely click on the next video so we can serve you. Remember to own your own lifestyle. Or someone else will.